Hi, Internet. This is a Nerd Immersion production, if you will, of Silent Peach Adventures, which is on the screen. Uh, so if you want to know what that is, I'm going to actually turn it over to the person who's going to be running this whole show, and we'll, we'll go from there. So... Uh that sounds awesome. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan with a silent PH in the middle, and I am going to run a game for you. Uh, Ted and I hung out a bunch at Gen Con last year, and the short story is I'm like, I want to run a game, but I don't want to deal with Twitch. And he's like, I love dealing with Twitch, so why don't you run a game for me? And I said, yes. And so that was the spark of this idea, and we got all of these fun people together. Um, and now we are, we're we're going to start a game. It's going to be awesome. Um, we're playing a old second edition module called, well, it was a it was a box set that had a whole bunch of stuff in it um, called the Rod of Seven Parts. And I'm using that uh, to kind of run whatever I want, but it's gonna be like a, a I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna borrow from that to make my own game um, in the Forgotten Realms. So we're gonna play uh, a game in the Forgotten Realms and I have a wonderful cast of characters and we'll start with LB, cause she's over here on my screen. LB, who are you? And Hi, I'm LB Hackamup. I'm playing Siren. She's a tiefling rogue. Ooh. And Brenna, who are you playing? I am playing Rakiri and Eric Krokra Warlock. That's awesome. And Ted, you're taking a sip of coffee. Who are you playing? That's fine. I'm playing Lagwin. He's a wood elf blade singer. That's awesome. Sorry, high, elf. Finally... high elf, my bad. There you go. And finally, uh, Lex, who are you playing? I'm playing Shifter, the human wizard. So we've got a couple of wizards. We've got a warlock and a rogue, and uh, I'm I'm really I'm really excited. It's gonna be awesome. Um, is there anything we? Oh, and so Silent PH Adventures uh, was. I wanna I wanna do more of these on various different channels, but I wanted them to be like, oh well, Jordan's making them, so that's what that is. But it is a very much a nerd immersion game. Uh, thank you, Ted, for sponsoring us and for hosting us, doing all this fun stuff. It's gonna be super fun. Really excited. Uh, is there anything we need to know before we dive into the game? Yeah, let me let me get two things out of the way up front. Uh, I see we have a bunch of regulars popping in here in the chat, which is awesome. But I also know we have a lot of new folks here. So there's a couple things that you may be... There's a bunch of panels below, as there is on Twitch, that'll explain a lot of that. But the very first real quick thing is uh, you can see it in the bottom left-hand corner... Uh, it's probably be one of the last times you hear about this for a little while, but Hero Forge is sponsoring the streams at Nerd Immersion for the month of February. So they just did a really successful Kickstarter, something like three million dollars for cool three uh, D printed minis that are in color. They look like this. They can get all sorts of gradients and all sorts of cool effects. So anyway, thank you, Hero Forge. Second thing. Uh, if you're familiar with Nerd Immersion channels, you know that there's a mechanic of player interaction. And the way that works is you all can choose, if you wish, to donate to the stream uh, via Streamlabs or any of the other donation type things we have down there uh, to give players advantage, or what we call them as charges. So $5 equals one charge. And then I can flip up this little thing you'll see pop up on screen where it has little bars with every character's names and a little hashtag next to it, which is hashtag their name. When you put in a donation, if you put the hashtag of that person's name, that bar will fill up and they can choose to spend those. Basically, we just it's like inspiration, the inspiration mechanic, right? So giving yourself like a reroll um, of, yeah. of a D20. Um, so that's cool. Uh, but if the players save up 10 of those they can use those to activate an ultimate ability similar to what you'd see in games like Overwatch or things where you spend up time and then you do some sort of big cool thing. Um, we were all supposed to think of what those were. I know I didn't. I know LB did. So um, once that is done, I will actually put it in a document that's linkable for you guys to see what the ultimates actually are in case you want to you know, game towards one of your favorite players doing something really cool. Uh, and that is pretty much it. Um, and then, again, I'll be monitoring all this stuff as we go through. And that's that. Sweet! Uh, awesome! So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just, we'll just dive into it. Really excited to have all you guys here. And thank you people for watching. Uh, I'm excited to have you uh, also here. Um, we start in Neverwinter, 
the city of Neverwinter, along the Sword Coast, the jewel of the North, as it is known. Um, and weird things have been happening in the city of Neverwinter for the past, like, maybe four, maybe six, five months. There's just been odd occurrences throughout the entire city, like um, grass turning blue for a couple hours, and then it goes back to green and uh, random puddles of blood appearing on the street. And then they, they disappear in like a couple hours. Um, clocks going backwards. They're, they're, they're like time isn't moving backwards, but the clocks are definitely moving backwards and things like that. So just a lot of like random magical weird things. And there's almost this, uh, this hazy fog over the city, this miasma. Um, and it's not super thick, but it is noticeable. Like people see it and it's making the, the sun kind of hazy and things like that. And all of you are here for your own personal reasons. You're not, I'm not entirely sure yet. I think we're going to figure that out tonight um, while you're all here. But uh, LB, why are you, why is Siren, or Siren, sorry, in uh, Neverwinter? I was sent here by people that uh, give me orders sometimes. All right. Um, and uh, Rikari, why are you here in Neverwinter? I've been sent um, by my patron on a quest to retrieve something for them, something that was taken from them. Um, and I've teamed up with Lagwin over here to help me find it. Ah, uh, excellent. And Lagwin, what are you doing in Neverwinter? Well, uh, aside from assisting Rikiri on a mission to retrieve something, uh, I'm going to say I probably got a letter from one of my old contacts just reaching out maybe to see how I'm doing, maybe to grill me for past failures, swing by the city, see what's up. All right. And then uh, our, our good friend Shifter, what are you doing in Neverwinter? Uh, my government, the government of Am, has sent me to investigate these strange magical goings on and figure out how to stop it. Like that. <laughs> um, the curious thing, uh, we'll say you guys have spent a couple days in Neverwinter. Um, the the fog, the miasma is you're breathing it in. It's it's causing you like not pain, but it's it's not pleasant. Um, so we'll do the first roll of the night. Everybody make a con save. Oh. So it literally hurts to breathe, is what you're telling me. Oh, yeah, it's not yeah. fun. <laughs> okay. Way to kick things off, man. Uh, you're looking for a 13 or higher. We got a couple people. All three of us are good. No, the Aarakocra, not so good. <laughs> not um, so good. <laughs> it's a Eric five. Um, you... Uh, are not used to this nice mm -hmm. mountain air like beautiful sunshiny nature it's all this is like city it's not good you're not really sure and uh you wake up one morning and you start coughing like incessantly and you hack up like this green uh gooey bile thing and it f hits the ground uh and then grows two eyes looks at you and then scuttles off and it hits the wall and kind of like fizzes into the wall and it's gone. So, nope. and like uh, that. roll a hit die and you take that many hit points of damage. Ooh, okay. Um, I also failed. Do I also get a fun snot creature? Oh yes, exactly. Yay. So uh, uh, Shifter, um, you wake up uh, after you're studying your book, kind of going through your morning routine. Um, and uh, you uh, uh, reach out for, do you have a wand or do you have a staff or? I have a wand. Probably have a wand. So you like reach out for your wand um, and your pinky finger falls off. <gasps> and you're like, well, that's, that's alarming. There's no blood, you know, you're like, that's alarming. And it will, you pick it back up and you, you put it back on your hand and then, oh, it, okay, yeah, we're fine. We're good. All, all digits are here. So just, just some weird stuff seems to be happening, yeah. Um, and you also roll a hit die and you take that much damage. Five damage, okay. Um, they're walking through this mist. Um, and this is always a fun way to start a campaign is that you meet at a tavern uh, because I don't think the majority of you know each other uh, and you're all on different quests for, for something. Um, but it's, it's really odd because there is one tavern, and we'll say it's evening now. The day's kind of been spent. You guys have been doing stuff. Um, 
there is a tavern in Neverwinter called the Golden Cockatrice. And it has a, uh, almost like a bubble around it. Like there's a protective barrier where the, the miasma, the mist won't get close to this tavern. So as you guys walk towards it, you're, you're almost like, oh, like you can breathe better. Just things are, things are nicer. And uh, it's just this nice tavern in the city of Neverwinter. Outside of this tavern is a large uh, wooden statue of a cockatrice that stands on a pedestal um, in front of the main doors. And next to the main doors is uh, a golden Labrador that's just kind of like curled up sitting there um, just being a good little, a good boy. He's being a really good boy. Um, you guys kind of all walk up towards it um, and you see one another. So, uh, Rakari, you're you're a bird lady. Um, but describe your character. What you like? kind of bird are you? <laughs> um, so Rakari is um, kind of a crane-like um, looking Aracrocra. Um, So she has like um, you know a very long, skinny neck, like longish, like slender body um, with like white feathers, um, and then intermingled with like a dusty brown and blue. Okay. Um, and Shifter, you're walking up and notice this this Eric and this this Elven wizard, and and what are you looking like? Besides being muted. Besides being muted, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shifter is oh gosh, so nondescript. They uh, they're wearing very plain wizard robes with their hood pulled up so that their face is obscured, uh, and it's just like probably like. Like a like a dark grays or like very like um, pale blue color, uh, super average height, very unassuming. Just no, nothing about them stands out of a crowd, other than the fact that they seem to be concealing their identity. Which, depending on what crowd they're in, might not even be that big a deal. Uh, awesome. Um, and uh, our elven wizard, um, mm. Lagwin. Yes. Lagwin, what do you? Uh, so moon elf, right? So that's like blue hair, palish, kind of alabastery, light grayish white skin. Um, and I think I decided because it matches the color palette best. Uh, the really dark purple kind of robes, hooded robes. Um, you know, long flowing robes. There's you know some maybe some armor underneath there, but for the most part, looking wizardly. Um. And yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm about, I think, 5'8". I'm pretty skinny because I'm an elf. Okay. Nice. Uh, and then back uh, behind the three of you, lurking in the shadows, there is someone you, you didn't even know was there. Uh, Siren, what do you look like as you approach this uh, tavern? Uh, Siren is a lavender tiefling uh, with dark uh, purple horns that kind of uh, I will have at some point, but they're not dry. Uh, they protrude back off her head and kind of flip up at the back. Um, she has a stark white hair, um, and she generally is wearing in public a large, not trench coat, but sort of a fitted longer jacket, um, pants, like leather pants and a leather, like nice clothes, but they something she's been wearing, you know, for the travels up here. So they're a little... A little gross, but still, you could see the fine handmanship with them. Awesome. And uh, that's actually a great thing to point out uh, that I want to make known, is that none of you are from Neverwinter. You're all kind of from different areas, but you've been, you've been all coming here. So as you're standing in front of the Golden Cockatrice Tavern, um, and there is a dog outside who has noticed you and kind of like looks up and, and is just kind of like eyeballing you, uh, what would you guys like to do? Uh, Shifter is going to turn towards Siren and, uh, and speak. And when they speak, you, uh, notice that their voice is like slightly distorted, like, um, oh, what are they called? Like the, like a news report where the person's identity is being protected. Oh. <laughs> so their voice sounds different. Like it's pitched differently. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's they turn <laughs> when you talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they turn to Siren and just say, Oh, fancy seeing you here, Siren. Shifted so, darling. So are we on the same side this time, or are we going to be against each other? Well, that's a good question. I don't know why you're here. 
Mm. We'll just have to find out, won't we? Well, in the meantime, shall we have a drink? Sounds good. <laughs> and then she's going to kind of turn and see Lagwin and just be like, oh, what are you doing here? Uh, well, I, it seems we find ourselves in uh, another situation where we're going to be potentially working together, I assume. Um, I didn't know you were going to be here. I have another associate that I'm working with, but I, if we're working in the same direction, I don't see any... Uh, well, a drink sounds like a good idea. Indeed. Uh, my name's Siren, and she reaches out for Vakiri. Um, Siren extends, you know, a feathery wing mm -hmm. and, like, gingerly shakes uh, her hand. Um... Rikiri is afraid of uh, most animals, um, so the dog is making her uncomfortable being so close to the dog. Yeah, dog does not look uh, very threatening, just kind of like eyeballing you. Like he's got shit. Yeah, eyes. doesn't matter. <laughs> um, would you like to go in? Would you, what would you like to do? What do, what do we all do? That'd be best. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Head inside. You walk in. Um, it is a, a fairly nice uh, tavern, um, full of an array of people. There's uh, some halflings. There's a gnome, um, a bunch of humans. Uh, there's some wait staff. A couple of uh, a, a girls are running drinks back and forth and taking orders. Um, there's a bartender. Uh, the unique, weird thing about this bar is that. Uh, or this tavern is that there's an open area in the back that has like a fenced gate that it that so when you walk up to it you can see like almost like a pasture well like a small little backyard um that exists in the back of the tavern and there are a bunch of cockatrices and they're just kind of like running around like they're just pets maybe you're not sure or just like oh we can come see the the cockatrices at the golden cockatrice uh don't stare at them too long because i think they have an ability to turn you to stone, it could be, but who knows. Um, but these ones aren't causing any real problems. And uh, one table, it looks like people are gambling. And uh, another table, people are just kind of swapping stories and drinking. Uh, one guy is like writing in a journal. Um, and there is a, a gentleman who looks like he doesn't want to really be noticed. And he's kind of standing off in the corner and he's just like eyeballing everybody. Um, he could be a bouncer, he could be, he looks human, but he could be a bouncer and he's just kind of hanging out, not, not super armored or anything, he's just like wearing regular clothes, but he's, he's definitely muscular. Siren's gonna uh, offer to buy everyone drinks. Assuming. Well, if you insist. That's very kind, thank you. Do you have any recommendation or any, um, anything you'd like specifically, darling? Dragonfly nectar, please. Absolutely. And I, I assume I know their drinks of choice, so I'm gonna head up to the bar and order okay. for everyone. Uh, the bartender's there and he's like, uh, what can I what can I get you? Uh I don't remember what she said, but one of those. <laughs> oh yeah, dragonfire nectar, is that what I heard? Dragonfly nectar. Dragonfly uh, nectar. Oh yeah, that's it. They have to milk it from a dragonfly. It's very yeah, expensive. <laughs> you, have to have, you have to cast magic to make your hand so tiny to get the <laughs> dragonfly nipple and just milk it. It's, so, I mean, that's going to set you back 150 gold for that one drink. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> I just really like your friend, says the bartender. And, uh, and he gets you uh, whatever you would like to drink and some uh, probably some elven wine for Lagwin. Mm -hmm and uh, something mysterious and smoking for Shifter. <laughs> About right. Uh, and it, it will say a total is, yeah, the 150 is fine for all for four drinks, you're good. Are you um, serious? Because I don't have 150 gold. <laughs> like, have 150 gold. <laughs> so, I was like, just being cool. All right, that's it. <laughs> so for the record, Rakiri has, is very sheltered, so she has like no concept of what things cost. Mm. So she would not have known that that was an expensive drink ordering it. Oh, uh, she'll just, oh, um, what's something that's similar, but like a copper or like two silver? Um, I, I've got like wine. <laughs> Why don't you put a drop of honey in it and we'll call it good. All right. So yeah, he does that and 
hands you the drink and takes uh, the very expensive and like pours it back in the bottle. Back. <laughs> um, she'll uh, kind of motion with her eyes over to the gentleman in the corner and uh, just ask the gentleman at the bar, uh, staff? Oh, uh, no, he, he came in with uh, the, a bunch of people tonight. Um, it's, it's like gambling night, so everyone's doing stuff, but he hasn't, he hasn't made a wager. He's kind of just hanging out. Mm. I don't know. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Uh, and there's an open table if you guys want to grab a table. Mm. Or Shall we? Sure. I suppose. Now we don't all know each other, right? Some of us know some other people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Shifter is going to sit down and say, all right, well, Lagwin, was it? Yes. Yes. Siren seems to know you. Any friend of Siren's is worth considering. <laughs> Agreed. Um, yes, I, uh, we are acquaintances. Um, we've spoken before, and it seems like it's a similar situation for yourself. Tell me, Lagwin, what is it you do? Well, um, I have a keen eye for business and uh, trading of goods. Uh, but if you're talking of the more adventuring variety, then that would be a unique blend of both might and magic. Interesting. Business. Yes. He is a prolific procurer of some very intriguing artifacts. <laughs> the exchanging of coin is the noblest of professions. Uh, so I see it, uh, it is a good thing to be working with you. And in Aarakocra, I don't see many of your kind around. Where are you well, from? Where I was hatched, you mean? Hmm. Oh, the celestial plane. Ah, traveled a long way. Yes, it was quite a journey downward. Well, it gets a lot lower than this. That's what they say. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that. I think as Siren walks up at the end of this conversation, she's going to set down the glasses and say, I don't know, I thought the hells were quite fun. <laughs> the hells? You've, you've been? Oh, yes. Uh, there is a, uh, a school down there for people like me. Uh, some like a summer camp for uh, tieflings. It's called Hell Scouts. I see. Did you encounter many demons down there? How many do you think is a many? Mm, baker's dozen. Then less than that. <laughs> Quite so, interesting. I may need to pick your brain on that later. Absolutely. Uh, what are you guys doing here? Business. Just yes. like always. I'm, I'm on a quest. I'm seeking something. And Lagwin here is going to help me find it. Going to try. An He's going item to. An item for a person. An item for a person. No, not really a person. Well, if we're all going to keep our secrets, I think we will not get very far. No, it's going to be quite the interesting conversation. Well, then why did I start? <laughs> we uh, have noticed that there are some you know, interesting things that have been happening in the city, some magic inconsistencies, mm. and we would like to know what's happening. That's all. Well, uh, again, if... Uh circumstances and our end goal align, then I don't see any reason why working together wouldn't make the most sense. But to be clear, my core is with the item that I seek. Yes. 
Um, you all hear from behind you where the cockatrices are, um, a very loud, uh, Polly wants a cracker? Oh, just, they've trained the birds to talk. Just ignore them. Offensive. <laughs> <laughs> then you hear again, uh, Polly wants out of here. <laughs> Ghastly things. Is it coming from the cockatrices? Is that like... Like it, yeah. <sighs> Didn't know they could talk. They can barely fly. Don't hey, look too uh, hard at them. Guys, I'm, I'm talking to you. You, you turn your back on me. Turn around. <laughs> Is it the dog? Uh, and then, yeah, there's just like four cockatrices that are like running around. One of them's near the gate and he's kind of like staring at you. So I was going to say that there's not magical things happening here, but they can't talk, right? That's a thing. Uh, is that a thing? Yeah, would I, I know that. Yeah, would yeah, that's a good uh, question. Yeah, you can make a nature check. Anybody who wants to, who feels like they might know something about cockatrices. I say the wizards may have a, a decent shot at that. Maybe. I do nope, not nope. have nature, but I will give it a shot because intelligence based. I got a sixteen. No, 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 no. Well, that doesn't in our schools of magic. <laughs> yeah, Rickary, you're you're very certain that cockatrices don't talk. You're like, oh no, that's just not something that they do. Someone must have enchanted these terrible creatures. Cockatrices cannot talk. It must be an illusion. And you you hear it say again, uh, well, yes, we can't talk, but I, I need your help. I'm actually a princess. I'm trapped in this form. It's quite a clever illusion, is it not? Yes, kiss me and, and free me. I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, I, I'm a go. Do it. <laughs> I'll see, grant you I, a win. See, I, I don't believe you, though, because that's exactly what someone. You just want to get a. Uh, nope. I'm, I'm not in for this. <laughs> you, cockatrice, are a liar. <laughs> Shift, head shifter head. just starts <laughs> laughing and casts minor illusion to conjure like a little frog and have it hop around the table. <laughs> uh, <sighs> is is there a barmaid walking around? Oh, of course there is. Yeah, uh, and you stop one. Uh, yeah. I assume. yes. Like, oh yes. Uh, what, what, how can I help you, darling? Would you mind explaining to me what is going on with your cockatrices and why they are accosting us with speech? With, with speech. One and of them she, claims to be a enchanted princess. <laughs> uh, she looks at your drink, uh, Siren. Is is your drink empty? Like no. She's like, All right, have you have you had one one too many tonight? No. Do you need something else? I mean, are, is this a joke? You're it's some kind of a joke. That's what you're doing. It's setting of me up. Of course. <laughs> All right. Well, if you need something, just you know, wave me down, and she runs off. This is concerning. So are the cockatrices is it... still there, just like hanging around us? Yeah. So there's four total, kind of like running around, um, and there's one that's at the um, the fence, and it's staring at you guys. Okay. Can I do an inside check on this bird? <sighs> yeah. Eleven. Eleven. Um. It's definitely coming from the cockatrice, and you're not entirely like with an eleven. You're not really sure if it's lying or not. So, can I do um like an arcana check to see if I'm picking up on anything? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Do you guys have detect magic? A oh, fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, definitely something magical is happening. Um, okay. and and you're not you're not entirely sure, but there's like a, like you can't see with an arcana check, but like there's like a shroud of magic around this bird of some kind. Okay. Um, I do have detect magic. Yeah, it's going to take me a, like 10 minutes to cast it. So if you can cast <laughs> it faster, by all means. Uh, nope. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Um, Don't, I, I just need a kiss. Just, just a quick kiss. Is it actually like, are we hearing this with our ears or is this in our brain? Can we distinguish it, that? 
with your ears, but the cockatrice's mouth is not opening. Okay. Uh, Shifter turns towards the rest of the table and says, well, uh, strange things have been happening here. There's been plenty of reports of it. Just this morning, my finger fell off. It got better. <laughs> well, well, that's good. Um, I'm not kissing a cockatrice. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. Nor am I. Probably not the wisest decision. Right. Ah, and... Fools! And then you see the cockatrice like back up and runs back to its other friends. Is there a really drunk person? Uh, they're, yeah, they're sure. What do you want? <laughs> I would like to try and talk a really drunk person into kissing this cockatrice. Okay. Uh, yeah, you go up. Uh, there's a guy kind of like slumped over uh, on a table by himself and he's got like a uh, half drank something in his hand that he can't quite seem to finish because he just uh -huh. isn't finding the motivation to or the motor control to stand up and do it. But yeah, he's quite inebriated. All right, so Siren will walk up. Uh, excuse me, darling, are you uh, are you available to speak I'm, to? I'm always available. And then his head like falls back down on the, uh, with a thud on the thing and he gets back up. He's like, oh, it's, who? Oh, I was just wondering if you would do me a favor. It, you see, I have some very interesting tastes and well, I was wondering if you might perhaps be helpful in my indulgent of them. Uh, I, well, I mean, yeah. Do you got a room? What's? My tastes are a little, my tastes are a little more um, different than that. Well, well what, and he's getting kind of like weirded out a little bit, but he's, he's still very, <laughs> Very uh, enticed. Uh, <laughs> well, what do, you, what do you need? I just would like it if you, well, perhaps I could pay you. I think it'd be very interesting if you maybe kissed one of the cockatrices. And, but the, like with my lips? She nods. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, he does a, uh, how, how much are you, you willing to pay for that? Would five gold su suffice? Uh, make a persuasion check. Okay. New character. Uh, 15. 15. Uh, he he kind of, he looks at you, looks at the gold in your hand, looks back at the cockatrice, looks at you, gold cockatrice, like that. And he's like, I don't know who you are, but if you go to that bar and get five gold worth of booze, I'm going to go kiss that cockatrice. Well, thank you, darling. Can I tell you which one? Uh, oh, sure. There's like seven out there, I think. I uh, know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Siren's gonna walk over to the bar and uh, like place the gold down and point over to the guy and just tell the bartender, C would you mind just, you know, let him drink until he falls over and then can I get the change? <laughs> and he's like, mm, yeah, but if, I mean, you have to drag him out of here. You and your friends. I'm not leaving him on the bar all night. Of course. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I will point out the one that I would like him to kiss. <laughs> okay. So uh, he tries to hop the fence, but it's one of those, like, he, he really wants to impress you. And he's like, oh, I can do this. He looks all graceful and then does, like, a flip over and lands on his face. Uh, <laughs> and he gets back up and he, he points again, like, this one. And you're like, yeah. And he walks up. And this thing is, like, not looking friendly at all like you're seeing lots of aggression and i mean they're like weird small uh featherless chickens yeah. and it's just kind of like a, a wyvern that's like like what are you doing you're in my, my pasture he um, stepped into the goose pen <laughs> oh, I hate and uh he runs up uh and he's trying to like he doesn't know exactly how to kiss it and so he grabs uh he tries to grab its neck um and then he can like hold it so it can't go away, but he's drunk. So we'll say he grabs the neck and he's like, ah, and this thing just bites into his face like real hard. Um, and he makes a constitution saving throw and fails. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, and no. turns back to you uh, with like blood coming down his face. And then all of his body seems to just start getting really stiff. And he's walking towards you, walking towards you. And then he just turns into a statue. He's petrified. 
Hey. Siren takes the five gold back from the, from the the bar and walks back to the group. Well, that uh, didn't work. Shifter uh, laughs and it sounds really eerie because their voice is pitched weird. <laughs> and there is a gnome on the opposite side of the room that is just like screaming with laughter. Like he's been watching <laughs> this whole thing and just thinks it is the funniest thing ever. Um, so, so Shifter's like, all right, amusing, but we should probably figure out what's actually <laughs> going on here. And then, uh, they sort of put their hand to the side of their head and cast Detect Thoughts. Uh, on whom? On whom? Isn't that uh, You can, you can switch it, uh, because it lasts for a while. Ooh. Uh, detect thoughts is concentration up to one minute for the duration. You can read the so thoughts of certain creatures when you cast the spell or and as an action on each turn until the spell ends. You can focus your mind on any one creature that you can see within 30 feet of you. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just check that cockatrice. Just make sure a cockatrice doesn't have any <laughs> any old thoughts. Yeah. Uh, it is <laughs> just a bird. Like it's okay. just <laughs> like, yeah, it's not, not smart at all. Uh, yeah, gonna shift over to that gnome then. Uh, the gnome is delighted and laughing, uh, and, uh, I would, they don't perceive that you do this, correct? Unless you probe deeper? No. Yeah, so I can read surface thoughts, um, and then if I want to probe deeper, then they know what I'm doing. Okay, so surface, surface thought, blah, 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 blah. Surface thoughts, he thinks it is uh, the funniest thing he's ever seen. Uh, definitely like a practical joker and is enjoying watching you guys interact with this cockatrice, so. Uh, yeah, let me try to dig a little deeper to see if this gnome had anything to do with the, the talking cockatrice. Okay. Um, a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw, and this is a spell. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, gnomes. <laughs> Good old gnomes. Advantage, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, no, yeah. you're right. All right, wisdom saving throw. Here we go. Um, That is a 11. Oh, I don't ah. think that succeeds. This all is right. a new character. I don't remember what all my numbers are, but I'm pretty sure that's not I enough. You, I'm thinking you got that. Yeah. You got um, uh, yeah, 14 is the DC to beat. Yeah, he's definitely been casting uh, prestidigitation to like make this cockatrice talk. Mm. Like you get the full, like he's been he's been messing with you guys. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Shifter's just gonna look over or Shifter's gonna turn to uh, the rest of the table and say, the gnome is trying to play tricks on us. Not very polite. Are you suggesting something? And Shifter gets real serious. <laughs> mm, should we... A little bit of strike back? I think it's only fair. Well, what did you have in mind? mind? <laughs> uh, he turns to, uh, to Lagwin and he just says, you can cast spells. Oh, and you can cast spells as well, Rakiri. Anything non-lethal, but terrifying. And I should point out that this gnome knows you probed yeah. deep. N well, hold on, let me check. Yeah, because if he does, he's gonna maybe skedaddle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Looking up rules is part of the game. It's so let's see. Uh, if it yeah, if it fails, you gain insight into its reasoning, if any, its emotional state, and blah, 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 blah. If it succeeds, the spell ends. Either way, the target knows you're probing into its mind. Yeah. So, okay. Yes. okay, so it, it it figures out that it got caught, and it's it's packing up. Um, there's a halfling that's trying to stop him and, like, sell him something, and he's just like, I got it, those people, and he's, like, trying to get out of here. <laughs> no. You want to stop? use of magic oh, anyway. Let him go. Well, I guess he's not that important. Speaking uh, of, are there any the people who are playing games, are they do I notice that any of them are of importance with my um, background? 
of uh, no, um, specifically n nobody is like, yeah, nobody is a uh, super noticeable. Mm -hmm. um, there is a gentleman there who uh, is wearing pretty fancy clothes. Um, not somebody that you recognize, but mm -hmm. he's definitely, um, he, if not, uh, if not wealthy, he tries to portray himself as wealthy. Mm -hmm. um, and this gentleman specifically at the gambling table uh, looks miserable. Like he has lost just about everything. Um, and he's he's like on his last, like, you know, like, oh, let the dice please fall where, where they're gonna help me. Hmm. Well, where are you guys staying? You know, that's actually a good question. I hadn't thought that through. I suppose we have not found a place yet. Though we all arrived in town on the same day. It's a big town. Seemingly, yeah. It is a big town. And for the four of us to find each other in the same place at the same time, literally walking in the door at the same time, that seems... Suspicious. Coincidental. Mm. I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, while this conversation is happening, uh, Shifter is just going like this, and they're just doing a quick scan of a bunch of the different people around the room for surface thoughts before the spell ends, and not paying attention at all to the table conversation. All right. Um, yeah, your surface thoughts, you're getting, um, there's a, there's a couple drunk people, there's a couple people that are worried about what's happening in Neverwinter with, like, the, the weird stuff. The gambling table, uh, uh, the, the, the guy wearing the fancy clothes, he's definitely, um, like, oh my gosh, like, I'm gonna, I've lost so much money, kind of a thing. Um, and the, uh, the gentleman that is not participating in anything and not drinking anything, just kind of standing in the corner watching the room. Um, uh, he's like block, like you can't, you can't really get a read off of him. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, Shifter's gonna snap out of the spell. Okay. And just say to uh, everyone else, uh, seems like a pretty typical bar, except that one in the corner and turns to Siren, I can't get a read on him. Enchantment? Maybe. Worth looking into. Oh, I'm sorry, were you saying something? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's fine. <sighs> well, I mean, I could do my thing, but is that really why we're here? Well, no, I, I don't think that's why. Uh... We're here, that's different, but we do have to remove a stone man from a cockatrice pen and drag him outside, I believe. Um, I don't believe that the, I didn't I don't have to do that. Oh. Well, all right then, never mind. <laughs> I believe the oh. barkeep said not to leave him lying on the floor. Well But he looks so good not. there. He's fantastic mm -hmm. decoration. And perhaps well, a warning. Well, you see, he is standing, so I think we are freed of our contract. <laughs> Smart. Well, <laughs> well, all right then. Um, the gentleman in the fancy clothes, uh, is, he leaves the gambling table and he kind of scans the room and he sees you guys. Um, and he, he walks up and uh, he's not, he's like out of breath because he's just kind of flustered. But uh, he, he's like, is, I, I'm really sorry for your friend. Is that your friend out there in the... In the, the the with the cockatrices, is he? Does he need medical help? Is he okay? Never met him before in my life. Yeah. Oh, no, he, he's fine. Um, all right. Well, too uh, close to a cockatrice. Common mistake. Yeah, it, it happens. Uh, um, and well, are are any of you hurt? Can I heal any of you for for some gold, maybe? What's your name? Oh, uh, well, my name's my name's Rance. Yeah. Rance. And is that your bodyguard in the corner? What? And he like looks around and he's like, N no, I'm, I'm just, listen, I, I really need some money. If you guys, uh, if, I, if you would pay me maybe 10 gold per hit point that I cure, if I could heal you up, just, I need some gold so that I can get back to the table and win all the stuff I lost. 
This is not our problem. Sir. No, but I, it's a service. I'm trying to help you. And, and he's like, you know, listen, and he takes, and he pulls out this wand and he's got this black wand that he pulls out. And he's like, mm -hmm. I can heal you with this. I just need, I just need some, some money back. Like it's a service, you know? Well, I would be I happy to give you a loan. Fine. <laughs> so a loan from Shifter. And what did you say, Rikiri? I said, I for one feel fine. Yes, I'm, I'm a little on edge that this guy just like pulls a, he's like flustered and yeah. pulls a wand out in the middle of the bar and he's like, I got this, I'll heal you. So I'm like a little bit like hand moving to hilt of yeah. sword. Like, yeah. And does the wand look like special? I mean, like a black wand is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's black. It could be a, a metal. It's, it's like almost obsidian. It's kind of shiny and it's got a wooden handle that he's holding on to. Um, okay. And it's like, I don't know, like yay long or so. Um, yeah. Do we even like, know how to use that? I mean, yeah, you, well, you just hold it and you know how to use it. That's the beauty of this. It's a family heirloom. It's, but listen, listen, I don't know. You guys look pretty wealthy. I'd, I'd be willing to sell this to you for 5,000 gold. <laughs> If you give me your pants, I will give you 10 gold. But, and he <laughs> drops his pants right there. And he hands it over to you. And he's like, thank you. I just, I need, I just need some money. Uh-huh. I'll hand <laughs> over the money. Okay. So yeah, he takes 10 gold. Uh, and he's like, okay, uh, uh, if I can, uh, and as he, he does this, he puts the, uh, the wand on the table to get his pants off. Uh -huh. uh, and the guy in the background is looking at you guys and he kind of like, perks up as he sees the object that this uh -huh. person, the wand that this guy has put on the table. Um, and he immediately starts walking towards you. Uh, there's a halfling that has been going around to different tables trying to like sell things and like mm -hmm. and barter and talk to people. And he's in front of this guy and he's like, hey, mister, you want to buy this? And the guy grabs him and just chucks him across the room like this halfling <laughs> just thrown and he's coming straight towards you guys. I'm gonna <laughs> slide of hand that off the table. And I, well, I I'm, assume I'm, everyone else acts. <laughs> and I, uh, I actually, I was going to say before she even beat me to the punch, I was gonna move to like body block the, like be in front of the wand, mm -hmm. just to be like there's someone there. I didn't know she was gonna try to steal it, but that works out better anyway. So stealing is such an intense <laughs> word that we don't need to use. Right uh, now. Yeah, make a slide of hand check. Uh, He's making his pants. So. And he is helping me. Yes. Uh, yes, we will say that Lagwin is helping you by 10. <laughs> <laughs> you go in time out. <laughs> it's not one uh, of my special traits. <laughs> yeah, so you you take this and uh, Lagwin's kind of like leaning on the table like, hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> he uh, takes his pants and he turns to you and he's like, yes, uh, my pants, uh, the gold, please. Uh, I will pass over the gold. He has superb underwear, like little hearts. It's Aww. silk. <laughs> uh, is this gentleman still aggressively coming towards us? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, and he stops uh, in front of Rance and the table. Um, and he's looking directly at ULB. I was going to point to my screen, but you can't mm. see that. Um, <laughs> he's looking at ULB uh, or Siren. And uh, he's just kind of like, he's like, the, the wand. Break, give it over. Uh, I'm gonna look at Ran and see if he's, um, does he seem to acknowledge this person as someone he knows? Uh, like no. He's like right up he's on really him. Confused and he really just kind of wants his money at this point, yeah. yeah. For being like a rare family heirloom, he's not super invested in this thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, Shifter is going to, or I'm sorry, not Shifter. Not Ghost either. Siren is going to shift her um, <laughs> her trench coat out of the way, and she has uh, strapped to her thigh a uh, crossbow that is kind of like holstered there. And she kind of just leans back and, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean. Uh, and he says, the wand now. And his voice gets like very, uh, like dark and inhuman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shifter just uh, leads to Lagwin and said, 
I told you, enchanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, see, I don't. Uh, let's wait to see how this plays out. Okay. Uh, um, if he reaches for you, uh, Siren. Like, if you're not going to give him the wand, he's going to reach and try to grab it from you. Or actually, he can't see where you have it, but go ahead. Yes. Can I try and do something? Uh, quick question How high is the ceiling? Ooh, um, fifteen feet. Sure, I cast levitate on him. Okay. <laughs> Bar fight. What's your DC? Fourteen. Uh, and what is a? It's a con save. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know my spells. I've never played this character before. Didn't you say fourteen? Uh, yeah, I need to know the stat. <laughs> oh. Uh, bu- 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 yep, you are correct. All right, he rolled a uh, 15. Oh, fooey. Uh, and so he uh, turns to you and he's like, oh, it's going to be like that. And you see um, this uh, like human form kind of like melt away. Um, and an extra arm pulls out of his chest and an extra arm pulls out of his back. Um, and his head kind of shapes and changes as this like skin clothing flesh puddle goes down to the ground. And he's got these giant mandibles. Um, and uh, he, he's clearly some kind of devil demon fiend thing. Um, and he's, a, he's, he's about 6.5, six and a half feet tall. Um, and he's looking at all of you and he wants that wand. Uh, and we will take a break mm. that. And we will be back in like 10, I don't know, 15 minutes or so with the thrilling conclusion. Uh, and we'll have a battle. Will there be some combat? <laughs> that's how you play D and D. There's combat sometimes, guys. That's that's true. No, that's not. I've never right. heard of it. Yeah, that's right. All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh stay tuned and we'll be back in a little bit. Uh welcome back everybody to the uh, action-packed first session of <laughs> Top Bars. Um a fiend of some kind uh, who is under some sort of illusion spell has materialized in front of you people. Um, so let's let's play this game and roll initiative. All right. And let's have Jordan open his initiative. Do you want him? Do you want us just to call him out, or do you want to go around? Um, I like to go around. So, Siren. You mean Siren? Byron. <laughs> Dang. I just want to point out that that follow that just came through means today 69 <laughs> follows. Oh! Nice. How many people are watching? I can't see. Hey. Uh, we've been averaging 60 people at a time. So. Um, Rikiri, what's your initiative? 17. Ooh. And Lagwin. That would be an 18 for Oh my goodness. And shifter. Big six, baby. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are kind of clustered around a, um, yeah, clustered around a, a thing, um, a table. And a uh, big scary guy. There's also uh, Rance, who's there, pantsless, um, <laughs> really kind of confused by the whole, the whole situation. Um, but Lagwin, you're first. Oh, well, all right then. Um, okay, uh, and you said this thing's got like pincer arms and yeah, um, he's got he's got like claw hands, okay, kind of butt eyes and like mandibles on his mouth. Um, he's got three legs and his this weird like tank of a, a chitin kind of body. Um, he looks very buggy. Okay, that's weird. Um, all right, so I guess what I will do. Uh, first up on my turn is I will pull forth, uh, I'm waiting all session to do this, from my belt, <laughs> a uh, what seemingly looks just like a sword hilt. Uh, and then I will use a bonus action to cause a blade made of pure light erupt from this sword hilt. Mm. Um, it may or may not make an iconic sound. I haven't decided on that yet. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, and, uh, I think we're gonna go, um, with, like, a nice deep blue to kind of just keep the theme going. My gut says orange, but I'm going for aesthetics, so we're going with blue. Um, so that's a bonus action, uh, and then, uh, let's see, uh, I'm gonna use 
my action, I'm going to try and I'm going to just like reach out to like a chair or something nearby with my hand and I'm going to cast Catapult and I'm going to just with my mind seemingly just throw this thing right at this bug guy. Wow. I need him to make a dexterity saving throw. Um, okay, and this is a saving throw against a spell and a magical effect, correct? Yes, it is. Boom, dexterity. Let's see what he can do. He rolled an 11. Oh, that's a fail, and that's actually a, a pretty solid roll, potentially, right? That's uh, 19 points of bludgeoning damage, I think? Yes, bludgeoning damage. All right. Uh, he, it says... So he says, it says here that he is resistant to bludgeoning damage, but only from non-magical attacks. And I think this is a magical attack. I mean, the thing that I'm throwing isn't, but I'm going to let you make that call. Uh, no, it is magic enhanced. So I'm going to say Fantastic. Yes, does the full damage. So a chair flies out of nowhere. And uh, <laughs> do you have a funny catchphrase or anything? Like, no, no. It's oh, just like wrong. I reach out with my hand and just like, oh, as wow. though using some sort of mystical like a, like a force, mystical force. Yeah. yeah it's crazy right okay now the now the purple robes i was talking you're starting to envision what they look like um excellent anything else on your turn no that's it for me that was it for you i uh lost my there we go um up next is rakiri what do you want to do oh, i think you're muted Brenna? Still muted. Ah, yep, bye. there we go. <laughs> um, so I've kind of been hanging back, but as I see this guy um, come barreling forward um, you know, with my wings spread out, I flick out like one of my wings, um, the feathers of my wings, and I'm going to catch or cast Eldritch Blast. OK. Roll and attack. Yeah. You get two attacks, I think, at this level. Yeah, I do. Ooh, um, one's a 25. That, that'll hit, yes. <laughs> and one's a 17. Those will both hit. Roll damage. All right. Um, seven. Seven total. Yeah. Or seven with one attack or seven total? Total. Okay. Taking some damage. He's not too happy. Um, then it is our good friend uh siren sorry did you want to move or anything you could move back further if you wanted to rikiri um or i should say lagwin because uh, you I'm guys gonna... at stay. the table like, yeah i'll stay okay um yeah i'm gonna try to like i, I don't want to be too up in his space so i'm gonna like stay back Okay, there's like some uh, other tables. People are freaking out now because like a fight's happening. Uh, certain people are running, like the bartender's hiding behind the bar. Um, so Siren, what would you like to do? Uh, Siren is going to, <laughs> just I'll like a it. mythical creature. Uh, she uh, shifts under the table and she's gonna kick this guy. And she, at the same time, she's pulling out her crossbow. Uh, so she's going to attack, attempt to kick him with her uh, boot blade. Oh, okay. With the, which is, he is not in melee with anyone, right? Uh, just, I think he's closest to you. He's like in melee with you, basically. Yeah. Okay. So not sneak attack at this point. That's Depends cool. on how close Shifter wants to be, I guess. But <laughs> I think he's on the other side of the table. So. Uh, that's a, a eighteen to hit. Eighteen hits. Uh, and this is just a normal uh, dagger. And ooh, max damage. So six for that. And then oh. as my uh, crossbow expert, um, I can take an attack with my crossbow as well. So she sl like slide swipes under the table, kicks him, and then pulls out her crossbow and shoots him in the face. I don't know. His stupid awesome. other hand. Mm. Does a 21 hit? <laughs> 21 hits. <laughs> Are these magical weapons? Uh, the crossbow is a plus one crossbow, but the boot blade okay. is not. All right. Um, that's five damage on that. All right. So yeah, you guys are doing some damage to him. He's not the happiest. No. Um, I am gonna. Uh, I am in melee with him, so I'm not gonna move back. But I will. Oh yeah, no, because that was my bonus action to to crossbow too. 
Um, but I am going to uh, interact with object and I'm going to shift the, um, with my left hand, shift the magic wand sort of into my uh, back part of my pants. And I'm going to mm. say to shifter, golden egg. Yeah, Shifter's just going to look at you and say, we always meet the nicest people. <laughs> uh, Siren, what is your alignment? Chaotic neutral. All right. So as you are holding on to this wand, um, you uh, it does not synergize well with your chaotic neutralness. Um, and you kind of feel like, not not bad, but mm -hmm. just like, this is what? Ugh. This is a good feeling. Like, like, it's just... Oh, it's kind of icky. Like, yeah. I don't know. Give me a tummy weird. ache. Yeah. Um, up next is our good friend, uh, the demon. Um, he's real angry because you guys have been throwing uh, daggers and chairs at him. <laughs> uh, and he's going to uh, run straight through the table. Oof. And I need um, Lagwin, mm. Siren, and Shifter to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, well, that ain't good. That's a big old seven for me. 23. 17. Ooh. Um, yeah, good job. So uh, that is 28 damage for our good friend uh, Ted. Mm. And uh, the other two of you take no damage as you jump out of the way of his flailing arms. He just moves forward and his four arms are going crazy. <clears throat> Iron table is ruined, broken to many pieces, shards going everywhere, cats and dogs living. <laughs> um, does this mean he's moving out of my combat uh, range? Yes. Technically? I, does. I believe it does. Okay, I'm gonna... I'd like an attack of opportunity. I would like one, please. And it... I took no damage, so I don't have to use Uncanny Dodge or anything like that. Correct. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, 17. 17 hits. All right. And is he now in melee with any of my friends? No, I can't use that because on the first of my turn, right? Correct. Okay. I haven't played a rogue in a while. Uh, five, five more damage. All right. Um, Shifter. Guy is flailing around at you. What do you want to do? Uh, am I in melee with this ombre? Um, we will say that he passed by you. You could also have an opportunity attack if you really wanted one. But I'm not wielding weapon. Oh, what okay. I have? I'll just throw that out there too. Oh, um, you are wielding a weapon. <laughs> I am wielding a weapon. So <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna make one then. Oh, that's not great. That is. Uh, oh, actually, this is a sixteen. 16 hits. Oh, All right. So that's going to be 10 points of radiant damage. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Shifter. <laughs> uh, Shifter is going to step behind Siren and just say, did we fight something like this in the Hells? Was it Cania, Stygia? I always get them confused. They're both so cold. And, then, and while, while they're saying that, they're just going to reach and grab the, um, uh, the wand from out of your back pocket. Uh, how does it feel in my hand, out of curiosity? What is your alignment? Lawful neutral. Uh, it feels real good. It's nice. awesome. Yeah, this is a really great wand. Nice <laughs> uh, wand. Uh, Shifter's just going to pocket that. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, uh, and then just gonna move back. Uh, I don't know, full movement, thirty feet uh, away from this this bad boy, and then gonna cast the spell. Uh, I'm gonna cast magic missile. I can still grab the item and do that, right? Yeah, you get an object interaction, so I'll let sure. you. Grab. Cool. I'll allow it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's the that's our first bit of merchandise. My face with I'll allow it, and we'll put it on. <laughs> There we go. Uh, 11 points of force damage. 11 ports. 11 ports. 11 points of force damage. Nice. 11 pints of force damage. Hey, I got so much pints of damage. Okay. Yes, he's he's not looking the best. Uh, real angry. Um, you hit him with a magic missile. Uh, you see the halfling that got thrown across the room. He kind of stands up and he's like, F this. And he jumps over the 
fence into the cockatrice pin. The cockatrice start chasing him and he's just running out of there as fast as he possibly can. Meanwhile, other people are leaving the establishment. Um, Lagwin, what would you like to do? Uh, so first off, Al, um, let's start with that. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna, as a bonus action, uh, take a little breather as though some kind of second wind because I'm, I'm hurting bad. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to get a big old six hit points back. It's my bonus action. I feel slightly better than I did before. Um, then I'm going to I'm gonna attack this thing again with my Sunblade because it's, it's right here. Here we go. All right. That is a 25. Yes, that will hit. So that is going to deal to it uh, 15 points of radiant damage. What? How did you get 15 points of radiant damage? Well, the blade does radiant all the time. Yes, so uh, it's a D8, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a D8 plus, it's a plus 8. D8 plus oh, oh, it's plus 8. <laughs> well, it's dexterity. It's dexterity, yeah. right? Because it's finesse for the Sunblade. I have a level okay. of fighter and dueling, because I'm wielding it one hand. Oh, dueling. That's how you And it's it. a plus 2 weapon. Ah, there you go. Because my other hand this. needs to be, you know... <laughs> and I, I, I gave you too many... Too many magic items. You gave me one. I have one. That's it. Just the one. That's one too many. That's the next shirt. Again, my face. <laughs> and on the back, there's a deck of many things. Um, fantastic. Don't so, tell me, because I'll, I'll draw. I'll pull from it every time. <laughs> uh, anything else, Lagwin? No, that's it. I'm good. All right. Are you going to move? Stay, right? No, I'll, I'll stay in melee, so... Um, because I think I'm the only one who could take hits like that at the moment and not immediately go down, so I'll take it. All right, Rakiri. How's um, Lagwin doing health-wise? He got hit pretty hard, didn't he? Yeah, I, I really did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. How, I mean, like, oh, a little more than, I feel like I'm about half speed that I normally would be at right about now, a little bit more than that. Okay, um, well, Rakir is going to call out, Lag, when do you need assistance? Uh, yes. Fine. Um, so she's going to kind of swoop over to him, um, still without getting too close, like she doesn't want to get into melee range, but, um, you know, she'll extend her wing out, um, and as she touches him with her wing, she will, um, cast Cure Wounds. I, both of us very much appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. And you're going to get back. Not a lot. Um, you're going to get back four <laughs> hit points. That's all right. Time. I'll take it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Kiri? Um, I really think that's all I, that I can really do. Uh, excellent. Siren. I'm gonna shoot him into faith. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, because he hasn't hit me yet, and I don't really want to whip out any spells or anything like that, not yet. So, um, I'm going to attack. Uh, it's a 22. Yep. And I get sneak attack now. Yes. Because I yeah. have a friend within five feet. Please end this so i don't Ooh. die <laughs> okay uh how does uh 18 do uh 18 damage holy cow but is that that's uh with your magical crossbow correct okay yeah that's who he doesn't look good he's got a crossbow in his face okay in uh, my with my bonus action i am going to use my master of tactics and i'm going to use my health action uh for um lagwin because he's next and i'm going to say Shoot him under his third arm. Uh, tap it, technically, Shifter's next if you wanted to help Shifter. Oh, but... yeah, that one. OK. <laughs> oh, I feel so loved right here. Um, then we're going to see if he gets to recharge that really cool attack that he did. Thank you. Uh, so instead, he's going to make uh, a couple of attacks against our good friend, Lagwin, who is in uh, within melee. So the first one is going to be a nine to hit your AC. Oh, that is going to miss. And the second one is going to be another nine to hit your I, AC. I would just, 
keep those coming. That's great. Yeah, those were the two attacks that he gets. So he's really upset. He's kind of looking around. Uh, well, he looks, he's got a crossbow bolt out of one eye. And he's like, ah. <laughs> that's, that's my really, hire me as a DM because of, ah, ah, I'm really good at things like that. Um, that's what people come here for. Um, Rikiri does call out nonchalantly to Lagwin. Don't fear death. It's temporary. I'll bring you back. Thank you. <laughs> you'll you'll be fine. I need you. Well, um, no, no, Ted, don't worry. Because if they strike you down, <laughs> I guess I should become stronger than you could ever imagine. Okay. Hmm. Only a master of evil, Darth. Uh, negative um, inspiration. <laughs> At least two levels. Victor, uh, what do you want to do? Oh, uh, I'm going to say, which one was the third arm? And then I'm going to shoot Ray of Frost. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, do I get advantage or something? Is that how that works? She's helping you, yeah. Cool. Oof, I needed it. Hey, that's a 24 F with, with advantage. That hits. Uh, eight points of ice frost damage. Yeah. And wow. slowed by 10 feet. Uh, he is resistant to that. So he's got <gasps> four points. Yeah. Oh, no. Plot thickens. Mm. Sh Shifter's just like, ah. I knew it was from one of the icy places. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it's back to Lagwin. All Top right. Of the, this like a a a, mon a beast. He's, he's just like deflecting blows left and right. You know, look. At <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you know how it is. Um, so as a bonus action, I will um do uh I'll spin my my sun blade around a little bit and kind of put myself sort of in a position with it back, activating Blade Song as a bonus action because I need to survive this fight. So anything that's going to make me a little bit more or difficult to hit, although nines are doing fine by me. And I'm going to swing at it again. That's a natural 20. What? All right. Bow, See? Bow, bow. That's going to be 13... 21 points of radiant damage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> 21 points of radiant damage. Uh, that's great. Uh, it has one hit point. So, <laughs> Rikiri, can you kill it? I believe I can. Um, I'm going to... What am I going to do? I'm going to give it the good old Eldritch Blast again. All right, fire away. All right, so just gonna point both of her wings at him. One bolt coming out of each wing. Um, first one's a non-natural twenty. Second one is a fourteen. Uh, the first one hits. The second one misses. All right. Well, I think it's gonna be enough. Will most likely be. <laughs> yep. Uh, three damage. All right. So, how does your three damage take this guy out? Um, so after uh, Lagwin just lights this guy up with radiant energy, um, Rikiri just kind of sees her opportunity and one wing just like cuts through a hole in the combat um, and this like electric uh, lightning energy just snaps out of it and like a bolt just into him. Nice. Uh, and so the combination of this electric energy of its Eldritch Blast and the radiant damage of the, the blue Sunblade. Uh, he's just starts twitching and, and purple goo and mists and stuff starts coming out of his body. Uh, he falls backwards onto the ground, uh, collapsing another chair into a, a bunch of pieces and uh, just starts to like oily dissolve and uh, bubbling like black tar goo and his body kind of like sinks into it. Um, and then from this puddle, uh, there is a uh, a wave of energy that seems to be released. Like it just kind of like bubbles out like um, Sub Zero from the Mortal Kombat movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it just envelops the whole room. Um, 
Exactly. Yeah. And it just, uh, everybody make a con saving throw. Okay. This one should be better. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Siren. 18. You gave me these dice, by the way. So thank oh, you for that. Rikiri. Five. Oh, you fail. Lagwin. Yeah, sure do. 17. Oh, you succeed. Shifter. 13. 13 is a success. Good job. <sighs> Um, Rikiri, uh, you uh, bring your, your arms in um, mm -hmm. and your feathers are, are you know, you, you kind of point your feathers when you do your spells, right? Yeah. Um, and as you bring them in, uh, the feathers change from your white, what, am I Yeah, correct? like cream color. Okay. So your cream colored feathers change into uh, cream colored snakes and the heads of the snakes mm -hmm. are like slither and you're just kind of like, ah, oh, and you start flapping around and going crazy. <laughs> um, the chandelier at the top of this place um, has a bunch of like uh, candles in it. Um, the candles burst into bats uh, and they just like fly everywhere and, and weird things happen. So it becomes very dark all of a sudden. Um, and then uh, you feel that same like radiant pulse, only it's coming from Shifter. And Shifter, the wand you picked up is now also kind of making like a, a sub-zero Mortal Kombat pulse of energy. And it's pushing out from you. Uh, and Rikiri, your feathers change back into feathers. Mm -hmm. The bats change back into candle pieces and wax falls on all of you. Um, and now we're out of combat. So Rikiri is just kind of like shuddering like clutching her wings, like enveloping herself in her wings. Um, but she kind of meekly says like, it's the wand, make it stop. Uh, Shifter takes out the wand and sort of turns it over uh, in their hand and says, I think the wand did make it stop. Very interesting. Does it give you the heebie-jeebies? No. It didn't like me. <laughs> Holsters the the weapons, twists her boot, the blade goes back in. Well, that was fun. Uh, does anyone know what that was? No one ever seen anything like that before. Do I know what that is? And would I have seen that before? Um, yeah, I would like to roll Arcana yeah. for that. Yeah, as well. you guys have done some uh, some some popping, correct? We're talking about the nine hells. Uh, Arcana would probably be the best choice. Um, okay. Not history. <laughs> no. Okay, <laughs> I rolled the ten. <laughs> well, I got a. But. I'm sorry. What'd you say? I said a 10, you're not sure, speaking to uh, Siren, but what did you get? I've got a 25, boy. <laughs> nice. Um, that was a the Hergoloth. <gasps> uh, I'm really you just good. just made that up. <laughs> um, I'll put it in the, the chat, and uh, if anyone wants to post it on uh, uh, Twitch, who has access to D&D Beyond, you can see this. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a weird bug looking uh Yugoloth fiend creature fun fun point of fact for D, D beyond uh jordan if you click do you have this you can see this on D, D beyond this yeah. monster do you see yeah. next to its name is there a little speaker button next to its name ah. that will pronunciation guide durgaloth there you go most oh. of those were done by matt mercer and marisha ray most yeah. of the pronunciations so <laughs> Saying that right, right there. So there you go. Uh, I was hoping it was going to be like the sound it makes. <laughs> <laughs> um, in which case, in which case, uh, they should get Jordan to do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, perfect. Uh, so Shifter just uh puts the wand back in his pocket or in their pocket. Uh, bends over to inspect the the goop uh that was this thing, and uh just says it and i'm not gonna you know what i would use the pronunciation thing hold on there you go it just says durgaloth <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not it's not funny but 
<laughs> like I'm picturing your character standing over this and like, wait a minute. Durgaloth. Durgaloth, yes. <laughs> Let me hold on. Okay. Uh and then, um type of neutral evil fiend is um that guy rance still standing around uh he got thrown off to the corner uh during the big uh uh arms flailing Mm -hmm. um he doesn't look the best he he looks kind of hurt um and uh kind of pantsless and and Mm -hmm. bleeding from his head we'll say he's not the best he's not out he's uh He's awake, but he's in that like petrified, like what's happening, where am I kind of thing. All right, I'm gonna um, go over to him and cure wounds because I want to know what he knows about the wand. Oh, okay. no, no, don't do that, don't do that. Well, then we have to give him the wand back. It's easier if we just leave. Does it look like he's in any condition to take it from us? Fair enough. Um, so yeah. All right. I'm wrapping up in one of my wings, cure wounds. <clears throat> He's gonna take, geez, three. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, it's enough to like stop the bleeding on his head and stuff, and he kind of like shakes himself back awake, uh, and he's he's just like, oh, what was that? Is it gone? It is. We defeated the shifter. What was it? Durgalot. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Durgalot. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. Um, yes, it has been defeated. Where did, why, why did he attack us? Well, he seemed to know you. I've never, I don't hang out with, with monsters. You should probably stick with us. I wouldn't go that far. Oh, come on. (laughs) He doesn't have any money. (laughs) <laughs> I'll just take my, my 10 gold now. And I, I mean, I can leave. I don't really. I think that it'd be in your best. You said the wand was a family heirloom. Who's your family? Oh, oh my, my, my wand. You guys have my wand? No, it was ruined in the fight, unfortunately. Destroyed oh. by the creature. Yeah. Nothing we could have done. You can have advantage because of Shifter, but make a deception check. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> Uh, twenty-one. Oh yeah. So he's he he has this look of like, like I mean yeah, just like really excited. You found his wand and then it's all gone. And he's like, well, I mean that was that was like my number one source of income. Like I was healing people. Small price to pay for your life, I would think. I yeah. I supp- well, I mean, but I I have no pants. And how am I going to make money now? You have ten gold. Use it wisely. He kind of like head down, looks a little bummed, and I mean that'll buy you a, a very question. nice pair of pants. And we, and we have that sad Hulk music as he kind of looks over his shoulder, and then he keeps walking. Is there but, any gold left but, on the table from the uh, ooh, bargain? The gambling. The gambling. Ooh. Um. So you can clearly see it, but uh, make a perception check, and based on how good that check is, is how much gold you. Have. Uh, perception. Yeah. How does a dirty twenty sound? Ooh, so you find uh, 17 pieces of gold, just kind of like on the floor, scattered about the whole room, really. Uh-huh. Fine, I'll pick them up. All right. <laughs> if I, so I, I did want to ask Rance about his family. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, Rance stops, and the sad Hulk music stops, and he turns back. Um, I... Well, what exactly about my? You didn't hear anything, right? About my family. I mean, they're they're not looking for me. It's it's fine. What? Oh, well, maybe they are. We we, we hear a lot of things. But how did you come into possession of such a strange instrument? Oh, I, the wand. I well, it, I mean, it's a family heirloom. It's it's been for me with me like forever. And I mean, I've, 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 um, I mean, my my grandfather had it, and and his grandfather, and it's just it's all uh, now it's mine. Yeah. What's your how, family name? Um. Uh, that's, I mean, uh, Norv. <laughs> Norv, where, where is that from? Uh, really far south. You, I mean, you probably, I mean, like, uh, like 
like maybe Tathir. I mean, it's Tathir, yeah. Yeah. It is Tathir. Yeah. I see. I got, I'm sorry, I got to inside check that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 12. 12, yeah. I mean, he's he's not hiding it well like he he's probably uh you're not showing sure exactly what he's lying about but he's lying about something if not everything so uh shifter's gonna lean over to lagwin mm. and and just be like mm, maybe we should keep him around he might he might know something useful oh i mean i think so I can already see that this may be a, an issue, a potential issue with some in the group, but perhaps not. Uh, Shifter's going to walk a little closer to... Uh, I'm sorry, what was this guy's name? Rance, I think. Uh, Rance. Yes. Rance, and not the last name you gave me. Yeah. I, wrote, I wrote a name, <laughs> but I don't know how to pronounce things. So. Go over to Rance and just be like, to fear, you know, I'm from Am. Really, we're we're like neighbors. And his eyes get real big, and he's like, it, "Yeah, they're so close." Oh, it's just beautiful this time of year, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you like the heat, <laughs> I went north because, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> shifter's gonna just be like okay <laughs> turn back to the rest of the group and say yeah i think rance should probably stay under our supervision well wh where are you guys stay staying tonight i mean you have extra beds like no can you can you pay me well he will need pants that's Aww. true i mean yeah i do need pants <laughs> Sarah you know. kind of holds the pants closer to herself. <laughs> I got Fine. these pants fair and square. <laughs> well, do you want your pants or do you want the 10 gold? I want both. Now, that I... wouldn't be a very reasonable transaction, now would it, Rance? Well, very well. And he hands over the gold and <laughs> reluctantly takes his pants back and puts them back. <laughs> And then he's really confused. He's like putting them on and he, he learns, he turns back to you, uh, Siren, and he's like, the belt, I want, I, I, I need the belt too. You can't, don't, yeah. <laughs> Pants back the belt. And then he puts on the belt. Uh, I'm gonna lean over to Shifter. You know, we could just cut the information out of him. I mean, everyone's cleared out of the bar anyways. Oh. But he might be from a powerful family. I don't want that kind of blood debt on my hands. I say we just tie him up. Wonderful. <laughs> Siren gives him a big toothy grin <laughs> with her yeah. sharp teeth. Besides, uh, I think the rooms here just became free. <laughs> I mean, I don't see why not. I will not be hampered by him, you understand. Reasonable. Well, what's the plan of attack, everybody? I'm going to get a uh, glass from the bar okay. and put some of this some of this fiend goop in it. Just, just, just save, <laughs> save for later. It is, uh, it is evaporating. Um, oh, okay. You can scoop a little bit of it, but it's even evaporating in the glass. You don't think this is going to last. Oh, all right. I can't save it. Bummer. So you better down it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Drink it, see what happens. It'll be great. Hey, Did you read cool. Descent into Avernus yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah, Shifter's disappointed. You hear, oh, <laughs> as it's <laughs> evaporating in the class. Uh, uh, so we're going to get a room here? I mean, it's as good as any. Bartender pops up. Oh, I heard you need rooms. <laughs> we, we got a whole bunch of rooms free right now. There's rooms upstairs. I got a whole suite of rooms. Great. Wonderful. We'll take. I'll, I'll cut you a break if you help me fix these tables. You're you're a wizard. Do you do you know the mending cantrip? Yo, do I know the mending cantrip? No, I don't. I do. Did you say you'd cut us a deal on free rooms? Why <laughs> well, free? 
got to fix uh, fix up the uh, the area here. And my cockatrices got scared off. I got to find them probably tomorrow. Was would you have rather us next time a demon shows up in your bar we just leave it? So I feel like pre- that is uh, a debt paid. Wait, you, I mean, but you did you did make a big mess. I mean, I didn't make any mess. You broke my chair, fair and square. You picked right, it up. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I will give you that I broke the chair. I will go over to the chair, and I will start <laughs> casting mending to fix the chair that I broke. All right, that's what I'm talking about. See, cooperation. <laughs> we're working. We're real friends now. This is great. Rance, you get out of here, you worthless piece of shit. <laughs> Rance is like, oh, I'm with them. Yeah, they're going to pay me. We're not going to pay you. We never said we were going to pay you. <laughs> Why? Well, that's what. But I mean, we were going to make sure you aren't killed, which is probably what was going to happen if we weren't here. Uh, uh yeah, that that makes sense. Well, um, I do want to throw this out there, uh, Jordan. We did. We talked about trinkets. Oh yeah. yeah so uh, there was one donated for our rogue, <gasps> and a and a, a, uh, a, a number was rolled, and apparently, mm-hmm. whether however this gets appears, whatever the situation you want to term it, it's it's a pair of manacles that you have rigged with like a hidden latch. Ooh, nice. Oh, so, so like perfect. You pretend to be handcuffed <laughs> and then I guess, get out. Yeah, oh, I mean, chewy. yeah, I mean, this is all Star Wars now. <laughs> it all comes back to Star Wars. Are you able to short? So that means that Siren's gonna die, and then in the next episode, that'll just be totally retconned, right? Yeah, totally. Right. Obviously. <laughs> the boat Siren was in blew up. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, oh, wait no, there's another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was just another identical boat. It's fine. It's fine. Uh. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Uh. So I. I guess we'll. What time of day is it? Because it's like we're like we're gonna go get rooms, and it's like yeah, it's it's night. You're like oh, you guys okay. could turn the night. You could you could do a full rest uh, if you wanted to. You could spend some more time trying to figure out what this wand is. Um, the bar is pretty much empty. Uh, I think you have the bartender here, and that's about it. So and rants. You can talk to them some more, um, or we can call it a night. What do you want to do? Uh, I think we should talk in private about yes. what's going on with this this stuff. I agree completely. Oh, like I said, rooms upstairs. Really nice. So and it's time. fixing Thank the you. chair. Yeah. He sits in it. And he's like, this is really, they put it back together so nice. I'm excited for tomorrow when he does the rest of the bar. <laughs> I just walk upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I ask, uh, when we get to our room, does it have a closet? Uh, sure. Do you want it to have a closet? I do. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, sh- I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, be like, Rance, come here for a moment. Uh, uh yeah, Mister, what, what do you? Can't really see your face too well. You're not supposed to. It's a whole thing. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, Shifter's just gonna be, she's just gonna push Rance into the closet and close the door, and then put like a chair against it so he can't get out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so Rance, there's like quiet, and then he's like, eh, knock, 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 and like doorknob, jiggle the doorknob. He's like, that, I mean, good joke, R- really nice. You, I, you could let me out. I mean, we could. I'm, I'm very, I'm very uh, influent. People will come looking for me. You can't just do this to me. Rikiri calls through the door. And, uh, now that's interesting. Tell us who will come looking for you. Oh, my. To fear family, they'll they'll be here with swords, like big ones. Can't I you know you're moment, you're quite bad at this. You're also I, quite far from to fear. It's going to be a while. So many places we could hide your body in that time. And he just gets real quiet. And you, hear like, you hear like the, the thump as he hits the back wall of the closet and then the like slide down, like, like he's just sitting and he's like, all right, so I'll just see you in the morning. Uh, so Shifter's going to be like, okay, everybody, 
uh, maybe maybe shifter will keep their voice down a little bit mm. so rants might not necessarily be able to hear them and, and just say all right so that creature is from the outer planes uh not the abyss not hell but definitely hangs out in those places it's a yugaloth uh you don't see many of those on the prime material this could be really bad but it could also explain all the weird stuff that was that's been going on like i thought it was finger. a jargaloth well type of yugaloth <laughs> wait <laughs> hold on durgaloth <laughs> <laughs> ah yes so what are you saying? It came here for this wand that we have now? Which means things from the outer planes are looking for this wand? That's a big deal. Well, well, things me... from the outer planes look for a lot of things. Motions to Rikiri. Um, well, uh, if you'd like, I could attempt to identify this wand. Perfect. Sounds good to me. Uh, I guess I, as I also chaotic neutral, get the heebie-jeebies in touching. Yeah, the one. yeah, it's a little weird. So uh, yeah. weird, but like I'd still be able to take the time to cast a spell. Oh yeah, okay. you could you could cast a tech magic. Uh, it it does not hinder you in any way. Okay. You just just definitely doesn't... are like it, like I don't know. It's like a. Um, like it's a, a left-handed wand and you're right-handed. It's just, it doesn't feel right, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, all right, yeah, then I will start um, taking the 11 minutes that it'll take me to cast Identify as a ritual on this wand. All right, I am looking up my notes. Oh, and the trinkets are starting to roll in. Oh, yeah. nice. So. I'm also assuming our uh, our guest over there, um, their family might be important if they had something uh, of interest to extraplanar creatures on their person. I would very much like to know more about this family. Siren's kind of like leaning in the shifter, like. <laughs> I know that look. We're not gonna cut him open. At <laughs> least, at least wait until tomorrow after we've had a chance to properly interrogate him. I want to talk to him and show him my cool daggers. Oh, right. Shifter would know that uh, Siren doesn't necessarily always go straight for the knife. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> And Shifter's just like, all right, so there was the time in Waterdeep with that money lender. That worked out pretty well. But honestly, I had to call in a whole cleanup crew for that. It was a real pain. You know, it is hard to get blood out of white hair, but you know when you get results? I mean, I can't argue with the results. You're good at what you do. I would never hesitate to work with you on such a job. Don't get me wrong. I respect you as a professional. But really, I think we this guy, I mean, he's a putz. <laughs> we could easily get information out of him without too much of a threat. I don't think blades are even going to be necessary. Exactly. That's why I'm talking a big game, so that when I go over there and I'm like, look, you just tell me everything. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Magic, magic, magic. Uh, <laughs> tell me what you see, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, you uh, you found a magic wand. Um, That's good. And it is a magic wand that I, a custom magic wand that I have put into D&D Beyond. Um, I am told that if you click that link I put in the Zoom chat, because you are in my game, you will be able to see it. Correct. Okay. So it is called Ruat. Um, a Ruat, something like that. Um, and it is a wand of pure wounds. It's got five charges mm -hmm. and you can use a charge to to uh, cast cure wounds. Awesome. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, also, uh, while you're uh, going over this wand and kind of checking it out and doing all the various things, um, the <laughs> wooden handle 
is um, like very loose and mm. you get the feeling like it was added later. And so it's like, well, this doesn't really belong here. So you kind of like slide that off and it's just a, a long piece of dark obsidian. It's shiny, um, but it's not obsidian because it's very strong, it's very light. Uh, and you can still operate it and use it as this wand, uh, wand of cure wounds. But um, yeah, it's just this kind of long fashioned black obsidian like stick. Well, um, I mean, I don't know. I feel weird touching it, so. But hey, I'm just going to turn down free healing. <clears throat> so there, and I, I will um, inform try... you of what it is. All that stuff. Yeah. Can I try to touch the wand to see how it responds to me? Yeah. So you pick it up. Um, what is your alignment? Uh, I'm lawful good. Lawful. It feels super great like this wand was made for you like you're just like i yeah like this is this is uh uh exactly what i want in my life is a wand of cure wounds and it's right here yeah just like it like fits like between my feathers like perfectly and it just feels like super well suited to me. um you do notice that on uh one end it's got like the wand shaped tip and on the other end it's uh it looks like it's almost broken off um, but the edge is so fine and so clean of where it broke that you wouldn't really think of it, especially if there was going to be a handle on it. Like maybe the person who crafted this wand just didn't finish uh, that part of it because they knew they were going to put a handle on it. Also weird that the handle didn't really belong when uh, Lagwin was examining it. Mm. Um, well, uh... Some other trinkets came through. I was just throwing. Okay. What one. do we got? Let's uh, think so, it. so I got a trinket. And boy, is this a weird one. Um, <laughs> it is a pouch in which a banana slowly fades into existence once a day. Oh, choice. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know, great. That's... I have so Potassium many questions. Uh, like, is it is it at the same time each day? Do you have to summon it? Can you take how, out the banana when it's partially slowly? formed? Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like it's got to be a fully formed banana from some other plane. Mm -hmm. Where this, it just comes in. Like, there's somebody. <laughs> we'll visit it. Don't worry. So like it, Somebody's job is just like, oh, well, 6 p.m. Time to put the banana in the pouch <laughs> for that somebody over on the prime material. In a parallel universe, the other Ted got a trinket where a banana disappears from his Yes, backpack. exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, listen, that might we might that might come up. You're the bastard who's been taking all my bananas. Like <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, and then I have to find the one that came for our our lovely our lovely bird. Um, our bird got got uh where is it? Uh, our burb. Oh, wait, it's over here. Here it is. Um, so apparently our burb finds a ring mm. that when you hit a target with Eldritch Blast, you have the opportunity to cast Prestidigitation on them when you hit them oh. with your Eldritch Blast. All right, that's sweet. Where did these come from? <laughs> Uh, so, um, a lot of them come from some tables that I have, and several other of them were formed from a, a running list on our Discord, which, you know, that sometimes happens. There's been some weird ones, like the Dragon Ball, which we removed a lot of the extraneous ones that are, like, stupid. Or the ones that are like, oh, remember that tattoo you've had your whole life? <laughs> that you just realized now? Oh. You know, so we did, we got rid of a lot of that stuff. Oh, okay. Cool. But they get weird. They can be fun, but weird. Anyway. That That's is uh, awesome and hilarious, and I love it. Um, uh, yeah. Anything, any other, you want to ask Rance any more questions? You guys want to talk amongst yourselves, or are we feeling sleep? Um, I want to ask more questions. Of course you do. I really want to know where he's from, who his family is, how they came into possession of this weapon. And what the stick is that's in the stick? 
to put it that way, yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, um, yeah. Do you, okay. do you want to ask him questions? I do. I'm going to uh, remove the chair, and I, I want to say it's one of those sliding doors that goes sideways, and she just <laughs> double hands it. Hello. <laughs> oh, uh, the pants lady. Hi. You know, they look much better on you. Well, I mean, yeah, they're custom made, you know. You know, I don't really appreciate people who lie to me. Yeah, ly lying, that's, I mean, don't, it's the worst. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw what I did to that thieving, but... You know, I'd rather you just tell me the truth because I'd rather not have to clean blood out of my daggers tonight. And uh, he fully understands what you mean, but he's going to say, uh, "Well, I don't, I don't know why there would be blood in your in your daggers because I mean the the demon's gone, so so everybody's real. We're all happy, and and there's going to be and there." I'm sorry, please don't hurt me. Oh, for the love of God, I just survived a demon attack. I don't want to even be here. Uh, all right, just tell me who you really are. My name's well. My name is Rance. I'm not. I'm not lying, but I'm. I'm just. I'm just a, a, a thief and a swindler, and I. I work. I work with the the halfling and. And he goes around pickpocketing people, and and then I I do the other half with the money, and I distract people. I, I was trying to distract you with with my wand, and and then the demon showed up, and I, I don't know, those weird things are happening in Neverwinter. Something is rotten in Neverwinter. So tell me, where did you find this wand? Uh, Who did you lift I, it from? Was I was traveling from from Waterdeep here, you know, new new ventures, new people unsuspecting and uh there was a there was a, an arm in the road that was like severed but no blood and it was holding on to this and well i took the the thing and i guess the guy who had it didn't really know how to use it or he got his arm cut off because it it cures you like you you can just point it to people and it and, it, and touch it with the wand and it, it cures them heals heals your health and so we we took it and we've been using it in neverwinter for like the last a couple of months or so trying to to uh, get money so we've been healing the sick and we've been curing people and we've been we've been you know doing it for coin it's only 10 gold per hit point yeah it's a really good deal you know perfect where exactly did you find it you know it was well it, like midway of this and i'm yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but yeah, he kind of gives you like a vague idea, and you, and you've traveled south from Waterdeep, so you know like the roads. Yeah. And stuff like that, so. uh, I'm gonna insight check him just because that's the correct thing to do mm. when dealing in these situations. Uh, Seventeen. Yeah, he seems to be telling the truth. All right. Um, and your halfling friend, what's his name? Oh, I have a name. Um, uh, Taylor. Taylor. Would anyone else like to know anything while I'm here? Indeed. Uh, tell me, Rance, have you come across any other interesting artifacts in your travels? No, but, well, it's... It's really weird. Like the the more I was using that wand, the more I felt drawn to leave Neverwinter. But we were just making so much money that we stayed. And where Rikiri, would you go? Well, when he says that, you're holding on to the wand. Yeah. You feel, you feel like like the faintest tug. Like if there was a string attached to the wand, it definitely wants to go in a certain direction. And you mm -hmm. move towards that and you kind of like point it like a divining rod and it's going um east and down like okay. it pointing like east and down into the ground into the earth eastbound and down mm -hmm. <laughs> i was gonna type it you beat me to it <laughs> <laughs> um do i know what lies in that direction um not not down like you would you you being an Aarakocra wouldn't really go under the earth or anything so you wouldn't know 
if it's okay so so not down as in south but like actually, no no yeah like east and like underground i see yeah. okay where is it pulling you east east for sure uh I would never go, but it seems to want to go down as well. Like mm. south? N no, D down, down. Into the underdark. And she turns to her the other companions who would know what she was talking about. Hmm. It could just be a cave. We don't know how deep. Or a basement. What would a demon want with a spell, uh, a healing spell wand? It doesn't make any sense. There are plenty. It seemed to be able to negate his abilities, didn't it? When the when the creature died, it transformed things, and the wand seemed to put them right. Maybe they want to get it to destroy it so that it can't be used against them? A wand of healing? Or maybe it can be corrupted to do the opposite. I mean, maybe. Um, well, we'd have to test it to make sure that, because this building has nothing around it, none of the spell nonsense that's going on, right? Perhaps this is why. I think we should test it. Tomorrow. Mm. It's late. Agreed. Well, thank you, Rance. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, I mean, we're still pals, right? I can hang out with you guys, and you'll you'll keep me safe from demons. Oh. So, was all of that about your your family and all of that? Since we're being so open and honest with one another, was that all just swindler talk? Well, I mean, it was just nice. I mean, like, and he looks over and uh, Siren, yeah, you give him like a nice look and he's like, yeah, 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 I was, I was lying. I'm, I mean, I'm, I just, I put on a good show. I'm sorry. Truly, you're quite convincing. Um, Rikiri like kind of kneels down and lays a wing on his shoulder and she's like, well, you've told the truth now. So you are redeemed for the time in my eyes, but... You should seek to be more truthful with us in the future if you are to stay. I, I really want to be truthful with you. And and speaking of the truth, I mean, um, you guys lied to me because that's my wand right there. Can I have it back? <laughs> <laughs> no. I see you also told us it wasn't your wand. I'm sorry, that wand you found on a severed arm on the side of the road, that, you want that, that back? Yeah, I, can I, 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 I make a lot of money. So I, I could, no, I mean, that's fine. You, it's my gift to you. That's yeah. You guys just, that's great. I love it. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad we're, we're, yeah, we're being truthful. It's great. Uh, Rikiri kind of like lightly, like, you know, taps his cheek when they're going. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so we know where the, uh, where he found this thing, right? He told us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, good. Should we cut him loose then? I mean, I see no reason to keep him in our company. <laughs> Nor do I. Mm. Uh, I cast Enemies Abound on him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if you, I was going to say, if you didn't do something, I had something on the back burner too. So. <laughs> I'm just going to cast a fear effect on him so he's terrified and runs away. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it works. He's, he's, um, <laughs> like, uh, you guys are probably on a second story. So he like goes to jump out the window and he's like, ah, not today. And then he like runs down. <laughs> so, yeah. Sighs have... and turns to Shifter and says, you sh you should not terrorize them. So. Mm. Oh, maybe you're right. I just try and have a little fun with the job. Uh, anyway, I have some work to do uh, before I turn in, if you'll excuse me. And Shifter's going to head downstairs. Um, Siren is going to stay in the room where the wand is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to stay up here. Mm -hmm. uh, huh. I am going to ask Lagwin if uh, uh, privately. Mm. Do yes. you trust her with this item? I... 
I, I mean, I'm not going to be using it, so I don't really. I mean, we just acquired it. I don't think it's. I don't think there's anything wrong. She seems, and she has been, more noble, I'd say, than most that we typically deal with. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, and healing comes naturally to her, so it seems a, a regular. It makes sense to me. But, I mean, you always keep an eye on her if you're worried. So be something to investigate further. Do I see them, um, I assume, like, talking and looking at me in the corner? Because <laughs> I'm in the same room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. We didn't... <laughs> yeah, so, so do, do I see that? I'm sure you do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, I was not, not answering like it. it was obvious, so yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm... I'm watching this and like I maybe can't hear exactly what you're saying, but like I see you looking at me and like maybe gesturing to the wand and I'm looking at it like, okay, <laughs> I understand what's going on. <laughs> um, oh, oh, I I don't need to keep it. I just wanted to try it. I have no love for this object. Well, better you than me. I don't really do magic, but I am concerned with its safety. Of course. Well, I shall keep it safe, but do not presume to think that I'm taking ownership of it. This is not the item that I seek. I see. You cast divine magic, yes? I do. Who is your god? I do not follow a god. Then how do you use divine magic? There's other magic in the world than from gods. Mm. <laughs> Siren <laughs> turns back to Lagwin and is like, I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, eh, would you be more accepting if it was a deity? Perhaps of... Uh, uh, I mean, would that I make it better or worse? Well, it depends on which one. I... Uh, yeah. Every god has its portfolio. <laughs> Agreed, but I mean, it, the healing works, and I'm thankful for it. It just might give me a little insight into a personality or beliefs. <clears throat> uh, I mean, you. I don't. I. I don't have an answer for you. Do you trust her? I'm not whispering anymore, but yes, I'm I sorry. Got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. Um, I mean, it's her magic will be useful in whatever endeavors we find ourselves in. I've been hired to assist her in her endeavors, so uh, I'm helping her, and it seems like in the scenario we just found ourselves in, she's going to help us. I don't think there's anything wrong with that we are currently work associates and if we continue to work together i think things will be fine but it may we may find that when the work is done we go our separate ways my All patron right. will have no quarrel with you so long as you do not inhibit my quest see look at that everyone's getting along hmm. well i trust you Logan, and I hope to trust you as well. I should hope so, though if not, it is in our nature, I suppose. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will post up in a chair, kind of kick my feet up, lean back, and probably catch some Z's. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to, like, uh, maybe there's a desk or something that I can perch on. Yeah, I'm sure there's there's something awesome that you can make a nest or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, and you guys will go to sleep. And that is, uh, I think, where we'll call it for today. Um, but we will be back next week with more episodes of uh, our, our fun stream here on the Nerd Immersion Twitch channel, The Rod of Seven Parts. Yeah. Um, right. Owen, 
we'll, we'll go down the line and just uh, see where people can find us and what they do and things like that. So uh, Lex, who are you? What's what's going on? What do you do? I'm Lex. Oh my goodness. I have done an actual play fantasy comedy series called Dank Dungeons. You can find that on YouTube by searching Dank Dungeons. Uh, I also write stuff for the DMs Guild occasionally, the highlight being Joy of Monster Cooking. You can find that by searching it on Joy of Monster Cooking. Uh, I do a couple other odds and ends and am somewhat active on Twitter, uh, Twitter at Dank Dungeons. And uh, you can find links to all the different stuff I do. And yeah, that. Check me out. (laughs) Uh, Brenna, who are you? What do you do? It's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Brenna. You can find me at Brenna Noonan on Twitter. That's where I am the most active. Um, I'm doing a lot of stuff in the industry, usually relating to game development or to marketing. Um, Can we plug things? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) It's my channel. Go for it. (laughs) I have two games on Kickstarter right now. One's called Testament. One's called Pyramid Quartet. Go check them out. They're really fun board games. If you want to link those while we're going down the rest of the line. Ooh, all right, cool. Uh, very cool. Uh, LB, who are you? What's going on? Hi, I'm LB Hackamup. You can find me on Twitter at LB Hackamup. I play a lot of games, so just check my Twitter uh, for my full schedule, which has been updated. Uh, but pretty much uh, Sunday through Wednesday, I'm on all the time. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Uh, Ted, we're on your channel. What, what do you do here? Well, why don't, well I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Why don't we talk about you? And okay. I'll, I'll round us out here. All right. So I am Jordan with Silent PH in the middle, and you can find me mostly on YouTube, <laughs> uh, where I do D&D lore videos and recently DMs Guild reviews and uh, hopefully in the future other things that I want to do with my channel because it's, yeah. I want to do new things with it. It's going to be fun. Um, but if you're curious about, uh, like, Aarakocras, I am currently editing a video on Aarakocras that will go up either tomorrow or Friday. So go to youtube.com slash Jordan with a PH in the middle and subscribe so that you can be notified about uh, new videos and all of the fun. And part of the fun is this show is going to give me new uh, things to make lore videos about. So I'm gonna be really excited about like the lore behind the banana. Uh, Let's make like it. That. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be great. The banana um, thing. I am, I'm uh, Jordan with a PH in the middle on all of the social medias. I'm pretty active on Twitter and Instagram and things like that. So you can follow me there. Uh, Ted, where are we? Right now. Uh, we are currently on twitch.tv slash nerd immersion. This is a Twitch channel that I run and you guys are watching, so you clearly know about it. Um, but I do, this stream now exists every Wednesday, so that's a thing you can look forward to. On Tuesdays, I do play my homebrew campaign four weeks out of the month. The last week, or three weeks out of the month, I guess, for most months. The last week is an evil campaign, which actually be next Tuesday. So uh, if you want to see what happens with four villains that shouldn't be in a party together, really shouldn't be uh but we make more mayhem together than apart you can check that out um i'm nerd immersion on all the social medias uh but youtube is one of the places i make a lot of videos there um apparently a dizzying amount according to some uh but videos from top 10 dnd related stuff uh, as well as reviews and advice and all sorts of stuff by the way if you want to see a review that i did on the joy of monster cooking that's out there you can go see lex's product as i review it it's on there um so yeah that's what i do we do have a second channel where this so this vod will be here and remain here on twitch if you want to watch it after the fact there's a secondary gameplay channel nerd immersion plays that's where i'll be uploading this content either tomorrow or the next day depending on how much time i have on the editing schedule to get it out so you guys can go and catch up on it and then stay up to date as more wednesdays come by All right, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Can I say two things really quick? Yeah. Uh, one is if you want this show in podcast form, I'm going to be releasing it on my Patreon um, as an audio podcast. So uh, you can you can go there. It's just a dollar. A dollar a month will get you all of the other stuff. And if you're curious about uh, Ted from Nerd Immersion, I interviewed him at Gen Con, and there's a great podcast where the two of us just talk about stuff. Uh, also there was something oh i have a podcast called the saturday morning DD show and if you like this show mm. i'm going to be talking about like my thought process about dming this and things like that on that podcast 
So search for the Saturday morning D and D show uh, to get that. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. And actually, I will be on it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this Saturday so my, with you. Yeah, this Saturday. So my regular co-host will not be there this Saturday, <laughs> uh, and Ted is going to step in and, and be the guest host. Uh, yeah. So be sure to yeah come hang out with us. Uh, and that's on YouTube, uh, mm-hmm. not on Twitch, but it's on YouTube. So yeah. yeah. So no, and again, if you guys a long way out from Gen Con, but good stuff happens at Gen Con. You guys should all come to Gen Con. It's a blast. Oh, man. so much fun. Yeah, I can be there. We're looking at you, Lex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I did want to say it's been like a ridiculous amount of subs and and follows today. Like since we've been here, like I said, we're in the seventies now. There's like been five or six subscriptions. So wow, thank you all so much for coming to check out the channel. Uh, hopefully, episode one was enough to hook you in, and you'll want to come back next week because. Um, you know, it can only go either up or down. I really don't know where it's going to go. But it's going to go somewhere. Maybe to a banana plane. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to say on your end, sir? Nope, I'm good. All right, well. I'm really excited that this happened and that it is happening and it's a lot of fun. So thank you guys. Thank you, awesome players. Yeah. Thank this you. This has been a fun time. Totally. Well. We'll see you guys uh, next week, I guess. Let's do it.